This is the Severn Estuary, which lies between England and Wales. It's the second biggest estuary in Europe. Imagine a dam stretching right across it, 16 kilometers in length, with a motorway on the top, and most importantly, a power station underneath. Some people say this could be part of the answer to the energy crisis that could face Britain in the next century. Others think it will be an absolute disaster, ecologically, environmentally, and economically. What do you think? Let's consider some of the facts and some of the opinions on the idea of building the Seven Barrage. As we move towards the 21st century, we have some difficult choices to face as far as energy is concerned. Fossil fuels like coal, oil and gas will one day run out, sooner rather than later, if we go on using them at the present rate. As they become more scarce, they'll become more expensive, therefore uneconomic. We have to find something to take their place. The estuary of the River Severn could be the site for the biggest single scheme which would provide a significant amount of electricity. It would harness one of the most powerful forces of nature, the force of gravity, which controls the tides. No tidal barrage exists anywhere in Britain at the moment, but the basic principle of the scheme is in operation here, in the heart of a mountain in Snowdonia, North Wales. It's a hydroelectric power scheme. It uses falling water to drive turbines. Water is stored in a reservoir at the top of the mountain. It's connected by a pipe to a reservoir at the bottom of the mountain, more than 500 metres below. The water at the top has potential energy. If allowed to, it will fall to the bottom, releasing its energy as it goes. When electricity is required, a valve is opened. As water flows down the pipe, potential energy changes to kinetic energy. The water strikes the blades of the turbine. Kinetic energy changes to mechanical energy. The turbine connects to a generator and mechanical energy changes to electrical energy. De Norwig feeds its electricity into the national grid system. So far, a standard hydroelectric station. What makes De Norwig different is this. The process can be reversed. Electricity is used to pump water back up to the top of the system, to the header lake, when power demand is low. It's ready then for use when demand on the grid is high. The seven tidal barrage would work in a similar way. The sea would be allowed into the estuary through sluice gates in the barrage. When the tide reaches its highest level, the gates would be closed and the seawater trapped inside. As the tide falls, the difference in water levels would give the water on the inland side of the barrage potential energy. In another section of the barrage, gates in front of the turbines would open up and the water would flow out, causing the blades to rotate. Energy changes from potential to kinetic to mechanical energy and finally electrical energy. The difference between the two schemes is that De Norwig has a relatively small volume of water falling a long way, around 500 metres. The Severn Barrage is a very large volume of water with a small fall of only 11 metres. 
but like De Norwig, it is a pumped storage system, the pumping being done by the tide. The tidal barrage would be a renewable energy system. That is, it wouldn't be using a source of energy that is going to run out. Fossil fuel supplies will become exhausted one day, but the tides depend on the gravitational pull of the moon and sun and will, as far as we know, go on forever. Finding renewable energy sources is seen by many people as the key to the future. Firstly, they could contribute quite a significant amount of power, up to about 25% of electricity by the year 2025, depending on how development goes. They could also have a major part to play in helping to reduce pollution from power generation by reducing the greenhouse gases and helping to reduce acid rain. Would the seven tidal barrage on its own contribute enough power to make it worthwhile? The seven barrage would generate about 8% of the present electricity consumption of England and Wales. We require about 50 power stations to drive England and Wales, so 8% then is about three power stations worth of electricity. That's what you're talking about. So it would replace three very large power stations, which would mean less fossil fuel burnt, less greenhouse gases, less acid rain. And because it's tidal, it is renewable energy. What more could we want from a source of energy? Why hasn't it been built? Well, for a start, it's going to cost £9 billion to build it, and no one's quite sure where that money will come from. But it's not just the price that's holding it back. The seven tidal barrage is a very controversial idea. The Friends of the Earth don't see the current seven barrage proposal as primarily as a renewable energy project that's kind to the environment. We see it as a vast construction project. Like the Severn Bridge nearly 30 years ago, it certainly would be a vast construction project. According to official figures, it will take five years to prepare for the barrage and nine years to build it. It would create around 35,000 jobs during the building phase. Wouldn't that be desirable? There's two sorts of jobs that would be created. One is the construction of the barrage itself, and that would create a, a very, very large number of jobs, which in an area where we're short of jobs obviously would be welcome. But uh, people in my position uh, obviously are concerned about what would happen afterwards because there would be a lot of um, what they call in-migrant labour and all those people would have moved into the area and when the work came to an end you'd have all your own people losing their jobs plus all these extra ones that had come along many of whom may by then have brought their families along and, and want to stay so you could end up with a worse unemployment problem as far as they were concerned as before. It's forecast that other businesses would spring up because of the boost to development that the barrage would give to the region. That's how the other jobs would be created. But even that's not straightforward. We're forever having to weigh up the need for uh, releasing land for development against the environmental impact of that. And of course it, it could, can mean if you release too much land that you drive away uh, the people who would want to invest in the area because we have a, an area that currently is attractive and a lot of its attractiveness is its greenness. And if we lose all that, we, lose, uh, we, we could lose out economically. The Severn Estuary has a very big tidal range. The difference between sea level at high and low tides is 11 metres. It's such a powerful tide that it often causes a small tidal wave to occur. This is the famous Seven Bore. But the Seven Barrage would change all that. Western Super Mare is a popular holiday resort near Bristol. Its name means Western on Sea, but when the tide's out, the sea is a long way away. The barrage would mean that the tide wouldn't go out as far. The graph shows the tidal range at Western as it is now. This is how it would be if the barrage was built. That's not only a benefit for people wanting a paddle, it would be a boost for people who get out on the water for recreation too. Here and all along the estuary we have one of the biggest tidal ranges in the world and it means that lots of these boats now cannot go in and out at a lot of stages of the tide 
and when they do go out it's difficult sailing conditions. So moderating the tides, moderating the water levels would mean beginners could get out there and everyone could get out there at more stages of the tide. You're left with a much better resource. But moderating the level of the tides would have other effects. All rivers carry sediment and a lot of it is deposited when the river reaches the sea. It forms beaches, mudflats and salt marshes. The flats and marshes in the Severn estuary are particularly large and are very important to wildlife. The sort of birds that, that feed on the mudflats, on the worms and other invertebrates that live in the mud, are things like wading birds and shell duck. Now the Severn estuary is uh, internationally important. It's one of the top 30 sites in Europe, one of the top 10 sites in Britain for those kinds of birds. We're talking about seven species of international importance. We're talking of about 80 or 90,000 birds each winter. Now that's one concern, the birds that use the estuary mudflats at low tide. Uh, another is that fish. Uh, fish come into the estuary at high tide and they actually feed on those same invertebrates in the mud that the birds do. Um, and most estuaries in Britain, including the Severn, are actually important nurse nursery areas. That is to say, young fish come into the estuary, feed up, grow, and then go out to sea again, where as mature fish, of course, we catch them for food. The effect of the barrage is to permanently submerge 60% of the mudflats in the estuary. It submerges the feeding areas, and particularly the important uh, areas, which are the areas that are exposed at the lowest tide. There's big concerns about how many fish will be killed trying to cross the, the um, barrage, either on the turbines themselves or as they approach the barrage when there'll be pressure changes and that could lead to deaths and injuries. We feel that the environmental price is too high. There's one more big problem with the Seven Tidal Barrage, and it's to do with its actual operation as a generator of electricity. Can you think what it is? Well, the tide comes in and out twice a day. It's perfectly true that the barrage uh, only generates for six hours out of 12 on the ebb tide. Uh, it is completely predictable in time and that particular time also moves through the day so as the tides move through the day you generate at different times every day so the effect of the barrage has to be absorbed onto the national grid at different times that means that other sources of energy will need to be available to fill in all the gaps when power from the barrage isn't being generated so given that drawback and all the other objections and reservations, is it ever likely to be built? We believe that the barrage will happen when the economic conditions are right. That is to say, when people decide they do not wish to pollute the atmosphere and they will, are willing for their government to put sufficient sums of money into the barrage such that the energy coming from the barrage, the cost of the energy coming from the barrage, would be competitive with other forms of generation. There is another force of nature we can harness, and we certainly have plenty of it. This is a wind farm, on top of an exposed moor in Lancashire. There are 24 windmills there. The principle is similar to hydroelectric power, only here the windmill blades are the turbines and they're being driven by wind instead of water. But there's an obvious drawback with a wind farm. The wind has to be blowing for the arms to turn and therefore for electricity to be generated. Also, there's no means of storing the electricity and wind speed changes over the day and through the seasons so it's much more difficult to predict when electricity will be available. Wind farms have their opponents on environmental grounds too. Stand underneath one and they're not too noisy. 
but they do have a visual impact on the countryside, which some people find objectionable. Nevertheless, by the year 2025, wind power like this could be supplying 10% of Britain's electricity. You wouldn't think a rubbish tip had anything to do with helping to solve our energy crisis, would you? But think again, because this tip is keeping this exotic fish nice and warm. The source of energy is landfill gas. It's a mixture of carbon dioxide and methane that is produced as household rubbish decomposes. Landfill gas is one of the so-called biofuels. The methane gas is given out as a waste product by bacteria digesting the rubbish under anaerobic conditions. The gas is collected in a series of pipes buried under the surface of the tip. It's fed to an engine housed in one of these green buildings. There are five engines altogether and they burn the gas to drive a generator producing 4.5 megawatts of electricity. That electricity feeds into the local grid. And there's another way spare energy is used. The exhaust system of the engine gives out air which is still warm. And it's that heat which is captured and diverted to the nearby fish farm. The fish thrive in the warm water. Parts of this rubbish tip have already been grassed over, but it will give out usable gas for another 10 to 15 years. Sites like this dotted around the country could contribute a significant amount of energy in the future, perhaps up to 6% of Britain's total requirement. To sum up our energy options, with coal and the other fossil fuels, you have to take into account pollution of the atmosphere and dwindling supplies. Nuclear power has question marks over its safety and the disposal of nuclear waste. With a tidal barrage, who pays the huge initial cost of construction, even if the environmental concerns can be satisfied? Wind farms are cheap to install and run, but it would take a wind farm covering 680 square kilometers to produce electricity equivalent to that of a coal-fired station. Biofuels have got a lot going for them. We're always going to produce rubbish, but the schemes will only ever be small scale. One source of energy we haven't considered is the sun, the original source of all energy. But solar power is a non-starter in Britain as a major contributor. We just don't get enough sunshine. There are drawbacks with all the alternative sources of energy. And there are drawbacks with conventional sources. Choosing our future energy supplies is going to have to be a compromise. <laughs>